I'm Scott Eatingham. Thanks for joining us here in the unique Northwest. There's certainly no shortage of opinions about the election out there. And here to talk about some of the people she's heard from recently is correspondent Anna King. Thanks for joining us, Anna. Thanks for having me on. So Anna, set it up for us. You were recently out on a big road trip talking with people around the rural Northwest. Where'd you go? How many miles did you drive? And who are some of the people you talked to? I logged about a thousand miles. I saw five sunrises on my way to Colfax, the Dalles, Mission, Oregon, on the Confederated Tribes of the Umatill Reservation, Walla Walla and Mattawa in central Washington near the Columbia River. I found disillusioned voters, a little hope, and a lot of anxiety. So, Anna, I do think that, you know, more rural coverage is always good. But sometimes it's possible that uh, people who live in more rural areas sometimes get lumped together or painted with a, a broad brush. So I, I wonder from your perspective, you've been covering this area for a long time. One, how do you sort of define rural reporting? That's, that's certainly a, a broad term. And two, what are maybe some of the things that uh, larger outlets might uh, overlook or miss when they're coming into these areas? to do coverage, particularly in election seasons. Public radio has roots in sound rich stories that you can hear the places that you're writing about. And I love doing that. I love to capture the hoof beats, the combines, the gravel roads, the bleeding sheep, and the voices of people who work the land, chop the trees, harvest our crops that make their way to bigger cities. And people living in rural areas for specific values. And that's what gets missed by major Northwest newspapers and outlets that were that used to cross the Cascades with some frequency. So for the purposes of this series, that's what we stuck to, the tiny, the small, and medium towns on the back roads of Washington and Oregon. Of course, the campaign of President Bill Clinton nearly 30 years ago was famous for coming up with the term, or one, the campaign advisor, James Carville, is credited with the term, it's the economy, stupid, meaning that really when it comes down to it, that's what people really care about, and that's what really motivates them to vote. Do you think that really applies you know, almost 30 years later, or is it, is it more nuanced than that, even in smaller rural areas? It's still the economy, but it's not stupid. It's also COVID and healthcare. And I found a huge amount of worry over how we're handling the pandemic, especially the fact that kids aren't in school. But I also found many who thought the current administration was doing a good job. Everyone I spoke to was freaked. No matter who you're for, they're worried over the future after this election. So how you view the economy is through the lens of who you're voting for. Obviously, I only talked to about 100 people, but the Trump voters I talked to wanted an economy fix first, then COVID. Biden voters wanted a better plan for the pandemic in order to fix the economy. Other issues that I heard from is a number of people brought up climate change and the environment and the need for greater civility and community. You've, of course, been covering the region for a long time, particularly east of the Cascades in the inland northwest. That includes a lot of elections, but not exclusively so. And we hear this term a lot, the, the election is the most important of our lifetimes. And it seems like we hear that every election season. And maybe people will say, that's particularly true this year. I wonder, from your perspective, though, if this year is particularly different in any way. I know, of course, the pandemic, so that's going to, maybe that aside, is there just a feeling or a sentiment generally from, from people you've been talking to that really makes that sentiment true? Yeah, it is the most important, and it is really unique. I talked to rural voters in 2016, and I had a feeling that people in Seattle were missing a lot of pro-Tump feelings in the rural Northwest then. That bore out. This year, I saw what I feel like are far fewer Trump signs and bumper stickers and less confidence about his winning than back then. Biden voters um, were also worried, but if you're looking for unity, everyone is worried no matter who they are for. Certainly that is a sentiment that probably runs through every election year, but maybe more so this year. And Anna, we thank you for coming and helping us understand some of the perspective out there in the Northwest. Thanks for joining, Anna. Thanks for having me, Scott.
You can see more of Anna's Northwest reporting and more Northwest news at our website, nwpb.org. Thank you for joining us here in the unique Northwest. Northwest.